In the last few years, biofuels have been viewed as a way to meet rising energy demands, as well as climate change goals to reduce harmful emissions. At the same time, many forms of biofuels are being questioned as effective tools in the fight against global warming. While more recently, they're being blamed for the rising global food crisis. Climate change activists such as Ben Wickler of Avaz.org are skeptical of the benefits of most biofuels being used today. Biofuels were heralded as this fantastic way to move away from fossil fuels because unlike fossil fuels, when you use ethanol, for example, in a car, it burns less carbon when you're actually driving the vehicle. And it's also a renewable resource. But it turns out that if you just look at what comes out of the tailpipe of the car, you're missing almost all of the story. Because the amount of carbon it takes to, to get a gallon of biofuels into your vehicle actually has to include the amount of carbon it takes to plant and grow the fuels. And also, if you convert a huge area of land to growing biofuels, then whatever you were doing with that land before, uh, you have to do somewhere else. So what we're seeing now is rainforests being clear-cut to grow biofuels. And as everyone knows, rainforests are the Earth's lungs. So the idea of chopping down forests to grow biofuels in order to reduce the amount of carbon we're throwing into the atmosphere is just completely backwards. And studies are finding that even biofuels that seemed relatively promising because of this land displacement effect, all the different things that go into creating the biofuels, most of those in use today have a net negative impact on global warming. One of the uh, impacts of biofuels that a lot of folks didn't see coming is that because we're essentially burning food now for fuel, the price of food is shot up. And the way that this is happening is that lots of crops uh, that were being grown to feed people and animals now are being grown to feed cars and the supplies reduce. And also people are switching from growing food crops to growing biofuel crops. There are many kinds of biofuels that are just a terrible, awful idea. But the fact is that if you look a little bit more closely, some are much better than others. The promise is what, what they call second generation biofuels. For example, food wastes. Uh, the kitchen grease that comes out of restaurants can actually be used to, uh, to power cars and buses. Those conceivably could be an enormous boon to help fight global warming. But we need a really strong set of standards so that only stuff that actually emits less carbon and doesn't cause a, a food crisis can get through. If you do set up a system of standards that can divide the good from the bad, literally divide the wheat from the chaff and say, burn the chaff, don't burn the wheat, then you can create a marketplace essentially for the good kind of biofuels. While Avaz.org is campaigning for new global biofuel standards, Katarina Wahlberg from the Global Policy Forum is calling for an outright moratorium. Stopping biofuel production is absolutely essential. It's one of the most urgent things we have to do now. Scientists in the EU have called on the EU Commission to, to scrap the 10% target on biofuel. I think as of now, we can't push biofuel production further. It's, it's a very dangerous trend. It's putting pressure on food resources and on the environment, and I think we should focus now on, on ending biofuel production, at least until there is such a thing as biofuels that would not put this kind of strain on, on neither food nor the environment. But I think most scientists agree that we are very far from such a scenario.